Hey, everybody. Welcome to the fourth ever Fitness, Food, and Fun. It's a chat with Annie Mack. We are here to bring people in the fitness world to talk to you and really be relatable. And today I'm honored to have my buddy and good friend, John Florio, here to have a conversation. He's down there in his music studio, so you can gather that John is a musician, but John is a personal trainer, and John has run his own personal training business for many years. He's also simultaneously working for other gyms, training people, right now dealing with the COVID situation, training people in their homes, training people online, training people at the gym, so it's an interesting story. And so John, with, with this being fitness, food, and fun, you know, the first thing we like to get people to talk about is what is fitness in your life? And, and really you can start with how did it, how did you get into it? Like, how did it come into your life? You know, starting at maybe childhood, or maybe you didn't get into it to adulthood. So fill us in on anything I didn't cover about you on uh, your background that you want to share and then roll right into how, what fitness is in your life. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the intro, Andy. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been not fitness, but activity, sports, you know, we're all always there from the, from as long as I can remember. Played every sport under the sun. But when fitness really started becoming part of my life was when we started freshman year football, we started hitting the weight room and the camaraderie and everyone getting jacked up and getting excited and loud music and that was a lot of fun you know so not only with the team and you know my friends and and the coaches but then for me personally lifting it really made me feel good you know you work hard for a goal uh, you achieve it uh, you feel better hopefully you look better for yourself and I, I absolutely fell in love with it so you know, sports and activity were always there, but working out fitness really clicked when I started hitting the weight room when I was, when I was a freshman and in high school. And then from there, it was a part of my life through high school, got into college at UConn stores. And, you know, when it was time to declare a major, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that, you know, I wanted to be on my feet, moving, connecting with people somehow. I knew I liked working out. I like sports. Funny enough, my advisor, she mentioned, why don't you try athletic training? Mm. And another like, semester later or something like that, my grades weren't the best. And she, and she eventually said, you know, well, you don't have the, you don't have the GPA for athletic training. What about strength conditioning? So I kind of like fell into it, the strength conditioning part by default. And the teachers, the professors at UConn stores were the best top notch. I mean, the best professor I had in the head of the department, Dr. Dr. William Kramer, he literally wrote the book on exercise science. I mean, he's been researching this stuff for 30, 40 years. And everyone else at UConn is top notch. So for what I already loved, I just totally head over heels for strength conditioning, lifting weights, you know, how that goes about. And my degree, exercise science, was geared towards working with sports teams. So, you know, you could apply that to people at different stages of their lives, general population, but my degree was geared towards working with sports teams. So the first job I got after school, after doing a couple internships, I worked at a studio in uh, Darien, uh, Connecticut, and I got a chance to work with some high level athletes, Olympians, football players, lacrosse players. And then, you know, the general population too coming in. So, and then, you know, the story goes from there, but that's from my degree, from my first job in Darien as a trainer and strength coach, I really realized how you can, how I can influence people's lives in a good way. And the more and more I learned, the more I wanted to learn and the more I wanted to, you know, implement that in myself and other people and hopefully get people uh, to where they want to be. So. You know, what you said, and we actually talked about this pre-session pre here about how people get into, get into fitness. And, it, and it's never like this, like tailor-made story. It always seems to be, you almost stumble into it somehow from you know, one experience to the other. Yours was really similar. 
how you, you sort of, you know, you got a, a little bit of experience from your football days, then, then the weightlifting, and then you got guided into it from by your guidance counselor in college. I mean, this is, you know, relatively late in the game for things, but well, not really, because you're still possibly even a teenager at that, at that point. But, you know, you don't even know what you want to do with your life. And someone guides you into this. And next thing you know, it's the rest of your life. Yeah, right. And it, and it has been, you know, you, you mentioned in the beginning, like, what's fitness to you? And I don't want to be so cliche that, you know, fitness is my life, but it has been my whole life, other than music and friends and family and going out and having fun. Not right now with COVID, but, you know, when we used to have fun and do stuff outside of <laughs> the homes. But uh, yeah, and it's it's been it's been a huge part of my life, if, if not the biggest part since I was 16 years old. And it's, you know, it's not going to change. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how, like you said, you kind of slide into it, but it's, it's just, it's, it's not, again, I don't mean to be cliche, but it, it is, it is my life. <laughs> I walk into the gym. I, do, I work out in the gym. I don't leave. I come back, go home, go to sleep. I got my family, which I love, but I live in the gym. That's, you know, that other than my house, I'm, I've been in the gym probably more than my own house, you know, since I've been working. So. And so now, like you talked about kind of your process of getting to the point of where you are today. So what is fitness in your life today now as a, as a personal trainer? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's obviously evolved a lot in the very beginning. Like I said, you know, working with like elite, elite athletes, you're really putting the screws to them and making sure they're, competing at the highest level i'm not doing that now but my journey has been pretty interesting where now i have i have clients with parkinson's i have clients who are recovering from strokes who are you know partially uh disabled on a half their body i have clients who are in their 90s and in their 80s and then other you know other people in their 40s 30s and 50s 60s too so it's been a long strange road you know going from that that high intensity athletic mentality to gear towards and then shift that all to helping anyone get to where they want to be so I feel real fortunate in my education and uh, my experience that I we can I say we but you know it's like me and myself but <laughs> that I can help almost anyone achieve close to any goal and if, I mean we haven't gotten there yet with all my clients but we're on our way so you get the basics from school I think and then I'm so grateful I was there but you learn a lot on the job and after doing it for almost 20 years now I've been around enough and seen enough to think I can help mostly anyone and even if you don't know how it's done you can kind of rework it like an engineer. You see where you want to go, where they are. They're like, oh, we need these steps to get there. So that's kind of where it is now. It's just, I do a lot, a lot of soft tissue work, uh, myofascial release, trigger point therapy. So at one point when it was just strictly training, balls to the wall, you know, beat your head against the wall. It's not that anymore, but I still have a few people who want to do that. And, you know, we open it up a little bit with them. But most of the time it's, managing people's discomfort, pain, trying to get stronger where we can, trying to increase functionality, range of motion. And for the most part, just again, with the older population, just trying to get people to feel better, you know, every day. And that's kind of where we're at now. Yeah. And what, what I'm hearing you say basically is fitness is your way to help people. And it doesn't matter, like you said, if you're an elite athlete, if you're somebody who's aging and needs some extra help, if you have an injury and you can help them rehabilitate. So maybe talk a little bit about what's rewarding about that. Is, is that the best part of your job? Is that why you do what you do? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. That's the best part, hands down. Again, I didn't get into it. To, I, get, I get into it for, for myself in the beginning because it made me feel good. But I didn't realize how rewarding that would be to help everyone else feel good about themselves. And by far, by far, the best thing about my job is helping other people feel good and 
get stronger and do things that they weren't able to do or are able to do now without pain and, you know, normal day-to-day stuff. The woman I, I'm working with now who, who has Parkinson's, she probably, and I told, I told my wife this last week, she probably said the nicest thing to me that anyone's ever said to me in my life, <laughs> ever. She called me her hero. Wow. Like, she said, John, you're my hero because she is in so much pain all the time and you know she feels her herself getting weaker every day and we work really hard her and I at managing her pain trying to keep her strong and like I mean almost like you know that's that's nothing better than that you know literally I mean I can almost like go into tears just thinking about it because it it was that you know I've never had anyone say anything like that to me yeah Uh, so yeah that is by far by far the best thing about my job. I, and a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about this because, you know, times are pretty weird right now, COVID and everything's upside down. But I, especially now where I'm very comfortable with my job and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of fitness and I can get to point A to point B with a lot of people. I've never, I've never worked a day in my life, you know, and you hear that, you know, if you're, if you really love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. And I haven't, you know, I go to work and my day is awesome. It's awesome. And it's because my clients who, you know, hopefully they get what I'm trying to get to them and, you know, and return it that actually yeah, it makes me feel good and I get paid for it, which is really cool. That that's a really, you know, special moment that you had with your, with your client. And I think that, you know, and the most rewarding thing for, for a lot of people is actually a thank you versus monetary uh, values or what people can give to you. And, and since we, you know, we're really here to be relatable for people. So I think what you're also saying, and, and I think is important for people to hear, and I'll give you a chance to like expand upon it a little bit. It doesn't matter. You know, I think a lot of people would be intimidated to maybe come work with a personal trainer and say, ah, he's not going to want to waste time with me you know that's maybe what they think but everybody is a really valuable experience is what i'm getting from you oh yeah absolutely and i hear that a lot if someone gets referred from someone else who might take a while to get into the gym or you know for me to call them or them to call me they'll say like well you know i wanted to get in shape before I saw you, because I'd want to make it a waste. Well, you know, that's what I'm here for is to help you do that. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call an electrician if I have a plumbing problem. I'll go right to the case. But uh, yeah, a lot of there's a lot of apprehension. Some people, you know, you see what's on TV, you see what's in the movies. There's a lot of expectation, and people sometimes think that you know you're meant to go to the gym to just to grind it and just to throw weight around or get yelled at or, you know, whatever the common idea is about that. So they just don't feel mentally ready to do that for the, for the commitment. But I I hear that a lot where, you know, I I wasn't ready or, you know, I, I had to get somewhere before to come before I called you or saw you. So and it's not, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon at all. Right. And, and you, I think the important part is everybody starts somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. And what I hear you telling everybody out there is come see me, get started. It doesn't matter what level you're on at all, because you, you got to take your first step. And it's all about progress, right? It's not about, I think people expect uh, when it comes to working out that they start with I don't want to go go there or do that because you need to be perfect to do that. And it's not about perfection. It's about progress. And you just got to take that first step. Oh, no doubt about it. That first step becomes a second step, becomes a third step. You know, when we first started talking, you planted the seed into my head about possibly doing this, the, the, the podcast with you. I was going through my head with all these little sayings I say to myself that, you know, like my rules to myself and for my clients that I might not express to them but I'm saying to myself and I've been saying it for 15 20 years and um one of them you know it's fitness health it's uh it's sick 
C I S. Oh, <laughs> see, this is gonna mess up. It's, Sounds uh, counter. <laughs> yeah, it's, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yes. C I K. See, I, it's been a long time since I even thought about it. Consistency. Consistency is that that first step. So you're saying consistency, intensity, and knowledge. And now intensity is that's you know that's as hard as you can go. Like it's not as hard as anyone else or someone else that you see. And the knowledge, you know, and it's actually in that in that order. You will get better in that order of of things. Like you, first, you have to be consistent. You know, you have to take that first step, but then you have to take the second step. You have to keep going. Now, if you keep going and you add a level of intensity and you keep ramping up that intensity, you will get more results. And oddly enough, the knowledge that someone like myself or so, another fitness professional brings into it is the third point. That's not the first, it's not the second. Because if you're consistent, you're doing something, you will get results. You know, now if you ramp it up and, you know, with some intensity, those results will ampl get amplified. And then if now if you start adding the rationale behind it and the background of knowledge, then now you're skyrocketing. But number one is consistency. And it's just getting in the door. And if you can get in the door and get hooked on the feeling of those endorphins when you're done, the feeling of what I got when I was 16 of, you know, maybe not being the most, having the most self-esteem but you know you're able to do something good for yourself and it felt good that will get you back in again and then it just keeps building on itself it's just awesome so the second part of fitness food and fun is food and as a personal trainer this has to be a big part of your life now because i've spent enough time with you you know i've i've been with you on strict diets and i've been with you when you, when you get off strict diets but talk a little bit about what food is in your life today and then maybe slide into some of the, yeah, your personal food situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So food in my life today, it's, you know, I've been trying to, for the most part, you know, eat the same way since I had my first job in Darien, my, my boss there, he really set an awesome precedent on fueling the body. So fuel, food is still, for me, fuel, but I certainly don't hesitate to go off and not think about it as just, oh, you know, I got to eat X, Y, and Z for tomorrow, but, you know, you got to be able to enjoy yourself. So this is another one of those times when I was thinking about some of these things that I run across in my head. So again, with my clients, you know, I'll give them my spiel of like, because everyone wants to get in shape or be in shape or lose body fat and all that. And that certainly takes a certain amount of dedication. And every time I see my clients, they kind of like check in with me and like, you know, I did good over the weekend, but I had a pizza and some wine. And then my line to them is you got to live. You got to live. Like, so that's one of those things that my, again, I play in my head. I was getting ready um, when we we're, I knew we were going to talk. You got to live. At the same point, if you're if you've been living too much, <laughs> you might have to tighten the screws for a little while. <laughs> now, when you're on that end, you know, and I was, again, you know, if you're coming to see someone like me, a trainer, health, a health professional, you might have been living too much. And then, and I actually haven't said this to any client, but I say this to myself when I really try to tighten the screws for me. And I think there's truth to it, but nothing tastes as good as feeling good is to yourself. But you might eat some, you know, eat that pizza or have that glass of wine and that's oh, tastes awesome, but it's, it only lasts for a couple of minutes and it's gone. But the way you feel for yourself and look for yourself that lasts forever. You know, you wake up feeling good, go to bed feeling good. So I think, balancing that out between you got to live and nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels, you know, it's somewhere in between. Again, if someone's been living too much, <laughs> then, then you gotta, you gotta, you probably got to tighten the screws to get to a point where you feel comfortable with yourself to live a little bit more. 
and I'm, that's where I'm at. I got a couple of new clients recently and they want to make a change. And so they, they went home and this one person in particular went home and, you know, took all the stuff that we said, like, it's not going to get you because she doesn't feel good about herself. Mm. So you got to, you know, because of the food, because of, you know, how she feels, how she looks. She used to be uh, an athlete and it's been a while and she wants to get back to that. So you're going to have to omit some things for a certain amount of time. But I, like I, you know, like I told her, once you get to where you want to be, you can start veering off and doing those. You got to live. But if you don't feel good about yourself first, feel good first and then start living. Right. You know what you said there, too? It's it's the same thing from like a physical aspect of entering the gym as it is with the food aspect. Right. There's going to be a lot of people out there. Like you said probably don't feel that awesome about th their bodies. Well, you know, whether it be like from overconsumption or being heavy or something like that. But in the same token, you're inviting them to come into the gym with you and again, make improvements and get better and, and take that first step. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I think you, the other thing that you said, I think is really interesting is a lot of times people are, were former athletes and they, they fall off the wagon from, so to speak, where they were before. And they're in, intimidated or maybe um, just down about where they are now compared to, to where they were. So can you talk a little bit about that type of experience, like helping somebody that was somewhere, getting them back to where they want to be? And then also maybe a, a, a word of encouragement for people that need to take that first step in and, and get on that, the right path of eating. But but ultimately, they don't have to be perfect. No. Yeah, absolutely not. You don't have to be perfect. But yeah, in my experience, I've seen a lot of people get to either to that point to where they have been earlier in their lives or even better. For instance, an example, I worked with this uh, guy and he's a friend of mine now because we worked together for more than 10 years. But uh, when I started working with him, he used to smoke and drink every day. He was not eating good stuff at all. He wasn't an athlete ever. And through our journey of 10 years working together, stopped drinking, stopped smoking. He felt so good working out. He wanted more and more and more. Still goes out and, and has his fun and eats and stuff, but isn't putting, and I mean drinking, like having like several drinks a night, you know, every night. Not, not what we're doing, having a glass here and there. But yeah, so total transformation. He told me in his early fifties, he was in better shape than he was when he was 25. And that's what you can do. That's how powerful the, the fitness and the food is. It's one thing when you start, you know, if you're working out, you put your first foot in the gym and you, you know, start sweating a little bit. But if you, if you can complement those results with the right foods choices, it just, amplifies it and at that same point again another one of those analogies that i've been using for myself and my clients over the years it's a snowball effect you got to make that snowball first but once you start pushing that snowball down the hill and you start gaining momentum with that consistency with that intensity then you can start veering off that path and not be perfect you know and not be perfect in the food category but then you know you got to veer back you can't just you know, you can't just keep going off the path. You got to start coming back. But there's no, there's no way where people, it's funny, yeah, because people think like, you know, I, I'll never be able to have a piece of pizza again. I won't be able to have cake again. I won't be able to do this again. No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to for X amount of time. Like if you're really trying to like start, go from burning carbs as a fuel source to fat as a fuel source, that's true. But if you're working out and live an active lifestyle, I'll be damned if uh, you don't indulge because I haven't met anyone who doesn't, who I haven't met anyone who restrains all the time and is a very happy person mm. because, you know, if you're just looking at stuff, that, you know, throughout the day and every day, like, Oh, that looks good. You are not going to be happy. So, you I know, you, that's really important for you to say happiness. 
really what what a lot of this about is is be, you know the being balanced type of situation is, is the happiness but what it, what i what would like you to now open up you know you've talked about the the good times and, and i appreciate you saying that i i have a drink every once in a while because I, I probably violate that you know quite a bit but give us a little to open up to us a little bit and tell us about a bit about some of your indulgences and in, in, on the food side of things oh man <laughs> <laughs> We might have to edit this whole part out. <laughs> Gonna run I mean, out of here. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It, uh, man. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, I've always had a high metabolism and um, I'm lucky for that. So I think I can get away with a lot of stuff. And over the years, I've been able to put some muscle on for myself. So the engine's gotten bigger so I can burn it a little faster. At least that's what I tell myself when I'm, you know, cashing out on a, you know, half gallon of ice cream a night or, you know, recently it hasn't been anything, anything too, too bad, but my wife's pregnant right now. And she had a couple of car, a couple half gallons of ice cream in the, in the freezer that she didn't, she bought, but said she didn't want. And so I, I, I took care of business in a night. I cleaned off two of them, you know, had to do your part. Yeah, didn't didn't think twice about it, you know, you know, really. I mean, in the past, has been really bad, especially you know after a couple of drinks, you lo- really re- really lose the the restrictions, you know, it just goes off the rails. Like whatever you can think of, it's been that and a lot worse. I I can't even. I'm like ashamed of myself to even like get into it even more. <laughs> so what are, hit us with a couple of your favorites, and I know, you come from an Italian family. Oh yeah. You've got, you've got some favorites. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, if I had, my aunt makes the best lasagna in the world. So, I mean, on Christmas, if I could have like that slice of lasagna, like every night, that'd be fantastic. Obviously pizza's huge. I'll never, you know, pass, pass pizza, any type of pizza, my mom's meatballs and pasta, like, so, you know, I don't eat pasta every day. I used to eat pasta every day growing up, every day. And my mom's sauce and pasta is just the best. But, you know, a- after that, I mean, th- again, it's bread, bread. I'll, I'll go through a, a loaf of bread in two days, you know, recently. <laughs> um, I've been trying to keep that a little, you know, a little bit more at a minimum. But so, and, and that's another thing too, if with the whole fitness thing, you know, you can, you can have your cake and eat it too. And if you're planning, if you know you're going to be lifting heavy the next day, you know, have some extra carbs, carb up, you know, you're going to lift heavier. You're going to be stronger for it. You're not going to feel good if you're going in on just spinach and, and kale, you know, that that's not going to, you're not going to feel good. But yeah, recently, yeah, like I said, my wife's pregnant. So we got a lot of stuff in the house and I've been really putting a hurting on a, a lot of the stuff she's been bringing in the bread, the ice cream. So if it's, if it's in the house, it's it, going just, down. it just burns a hole in my head. Like <laughs> I know it's over there, you know, and I must destroy it. So that's what happens. Yeah. An important thing about you, what you just said too, is that fueling yourself properly. Like sometimes these indulgences actually will give you a better outcome in, in your workout. So it's important for people to not you know, eat lettuce or kale or, or just not eat at all and, and think oh, well, yeah. you're losing pounds, but yeah. it's not ultimately helping you be, be, be healthier. But the third part of fitness, food and fun, yeah. is fun. And, yeah. and, and I love it because it's always good to talk about people's splurges. It's a nice transition into the fun part because you can see the, them, them light up. But let's talk about what's, what's fun in your life today. And and give you an easy lead in here too. I mean, there's several guitar heads behind <laughs> against the wall. Yeah, yeah. So uh, music's a big part of my life. I started playing um, when I was 18. It's a little late into the game. So again, I think to myself, I the two things I've been doing for the longest in my life have been working out and playing music. So yeah, I was actually down here an hour before we started. I was jamming, ripping it up, you know, practicing. It's, I play, I play every day, not because I, you know, someone's telling me to, or I have to work on something. It's because I want to, because I love it. So that's a lot of fun for me. I love creating. I love composing. 
and recently I've and all, like really and only re really recently I've really enjoyed technically getting better really practicing you know just practicing and the same thing like working out you work hard at it you get results and you want more and I've been working at that recently and I haven't done it in ever since I started playing really so that's been fun like I said my wife's pregnant but we have uh you know we got a two-year-old upstairs who's sleeping right now so have him running around the house is uh, the best part of my day that's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, again, with COVID right now, you know, we're kind of bunkered down a little bit more than we used to, but going out, spending time with friends and family and you guys and going out, enjoying food and, you know, music, concerts, that's, that's all fun for me. Uh, it's, yeah. And again, I, again, I'm lucky that, you know, I, I live in the gym because that's, you know, my job is fun. My fitness is fun for me. So, but outside of that, it's a lot of music and get a lot, a lot of it. So it's, it's good stuff. It's, it's funny because the period that we're in with, with COVID, right? That's a tough question for people right now, because you know what? You probably haven't done a lot of those things. You haven't done a lot of things that, that you said, even you haven't done, you haven't done a concert, you know, which I sure, I'm sure you love. I'm sure you love to, to practice music and then actually go indulge in a concert around a bunch of other people, you know, yelling at the stage. And, but I, I, it's funny that when we get to that thing, if it takes people a second to think about it because you haven't been able to do those things except on a, on a restricted level, but then it, it kind of comes back to you and you start thinking, oh yeah, here's, I used to do that. And I used to do that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't wait for whenever that is that, you know, we can do those things again, but I'm uh, very fortunate that I've, found the things a couple of things that I I love in fitness and music and it's a lot of fun and again it's I feel fortunate that I found that early you know early ish I wasn't eight or nine or ten but you know 18 started playing guitar and I can't I literally can't put it down so yeah it's you know in these times when we can't do too much I'm lucky I got a, a place like this I can come down and crank it up and bang my head and play a little bit and sing and you know it's not like doing it in front of people which hopefully you can do it at some point because that's that's what it's all for because I love playing out live so hopefully at one point we can do that again you know next whatever year or two but yeah other than that like I said uh, it's family and my son and my wife and and then love watching tv Love watching TV, good movies, you know, good stuff like that. You know, take your mind off it for a little bit. My wife and I watched Demolition Man on Friday. Sylvester Stallone was at 90s or early 2000s. She's never seen it. One of my favorite movies. It's so cheesy, but it's so awesome. So, uh, yeah, the little things, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Hopefully, again, when things open up, you know, maybe get traveling a little bit. That'd be nice. And, you know, do that again. That, that'd be cool. Yeah, you know, if you don't love watching TV right now during this <laughs> COVID situation, it's going to be, it's tough. It's got to be tough going. It's tough sledding for the folks that don't, don't like to watch any television. Maybe, you're, maybe your people are reading a lot of books or, or finding, finding other ways. You know, yeah. but also I think that people are going to see the sound studio be, behind you. And I got to tell you, like, that thing is, is tough on the eyes to look at. It's like one of those things that makes your eyes go blur uh -huh. with, with the dots. But probably after people see this, you probably get some knocks. and Hey, John, how about I come over and jam out with you, which you probably love. And, and I think that would be awesome. But final, the capper here, John, is how, you, we fitness, food, and fun. Yep. How does it all come together for you? It, it, is everything tied together is everything discreet how do you view the, how do you view them how does it all come together yeah i think everyone has to make it their own but for me personally it's kind of like i mentioned it's kind of one one thing for me fitness is fun for me food is fun for me so i get a chance to really have a lot of fun and i'm not you know i'm just saying it because that's how how it is for me you know in the beginning we we not working out, you know, you're like, Oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to miss a day, but now like, it's not even, I don't even think about miss. Like I'm, I'm there. Like, not only do I work there, so I don't have any, you know, reason, but 
it's 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 almost like breathing you know it's it's breathing i'm i'm going to work out like there's no way and the food the same thing i'm going to eat well <clears throat> from morning till probably when i get home and there's downtime at night i'll probably splurge a little bit but in the middle of that you know i'll probably be pretty regimented throughout the day it's just easy to do that but if something's at work you know if someone brings you know as in trainers too I don't know if people know this, but people bring in the worst food for trainers at the gym all the time. So there's always cookies, cake, whatever. So, and I'm usually eating it too. So, yeah. and then, yeah. And then the fun that's, it's wrapped into the personal experience, you know, being with my clients, coming home and being able to play some music and jam and, you know, have my son and my wife. And so it's really, for me, it's, really kind of all one thing. I've been, again, fortunate enough to be able to make fitness fun for me. And, and it's been my life now for 20 years. So there's no grind. I don't feel, I'm not grinding, you know, I'm going in because I, I love working out. I love pumping weights. I love training people. I love eating right. And I love eating wrong. <laughs> so, you know, it's, so it's all Chip great. T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I love eating right and I love eating wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I tell Kat, uh, my wife, that, you know, it's, it's hard to find a food that I won't eat or I don't like. There's, I just like everything. So, so yeah, it's all, it's all wrapped together for me. And I'm not saying that anyone has to get to that level or do that for themselves, but you have to find a balance, I think, with everything. And um, again, I've just been fortunate enough that my balance has been, you know, I've been working on it for 20 years where some people are just getting in the game now, but getting in now is better, way better than not getting in at all. Because the, again, one of those other things I say to myself and my clients, the best thing that you can do for yourself, I think is getting fit and getting healthy because there's nothing that's more fun than that when you're feeling good and looking good for yourself. A lot, a lot comes out when you're just talking about, you know, talking about what you do passionately and what I took away from that, that one of the biggest takeaways was make it fun for yourself. Cause if like the saying goes, if it's not fun, you're not going to do it. Right. Yeah. So you're not, I mean, you're not even, stressing about it all actually like you said you're you can't wait to get in there and do it you look forward to it yeah i mean you can almost say you don't even look forward to because you're just always feeling good about it you yeah. know it's just what you do and it's passionate so basically they think the message for everybody is just, just make it fun for yourself and hey if anybody's interested you know john's a personal trainer out there he can help you make it make it fun for yourself so john i want to say thank you very much for your time tonight Appreciate you sharing your story. It's really good to have somebody who is actually doing fitness as their profession come in and, and talk to people and then also uh, lighten the load for people and make them more comfortable and help them get that first step, help them get that consistency and that kind yeah. of thing along with the happiness. Yeah, thanks, Andy Mack. Uh, I appreciate you having me. It's been a blast talking about it. I was so excited when you asked me to do it. You know, again, it has been such a big part of my life that, uh, you know, someone wants to talk about it. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in. in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one, right. last, one last part on that that you mentioned, but like, that's one thing as a trainer and you hit the nail on the head is for myself, I try to make it fun for every client that comes in because if it's not fun, you're not going to do it. Find that thing that makes it fun love it get after it and it's just it'll build on itself so i just wanted that's a good point that you made thanks again and thank you everybody for joining us for our fitness food and fun we'll talk to you next time all right